Hey everyone, Nash here from Ready Set Test. Today, making a real quick video about installation of your Arcbird AP or Autopilot system. I will refer to it in this video as AP so you understand what it's all about. The rules uh, that I will talk about in here don't just apply to the Arcbird system, they will apply more or less universally to a lot of Autopilot systems inside a plane. But these are things to keep in mind to make sure that your flight is smooth and your AP works as it's supposed to work. And more importantly, that your AP is not fighting you in mid-air. Instead, it's giving you a better performance and better cruise. Let's just straighten out the camera just a tiny bit before we get into it. Right. Now, in front of you is my FX-61. You will recognize this from my previous videos. This has been my FPV aircraft for a very long time. And the Arcbird has lived here since the very start. I have had fantastic performance and fantastic flight time with this. And I want to transfer this to all of you as well. Lately, I've been getting comments and questions at the Arcbird FPV page in Facebook and also on my YouTube channel that people have had problems with their AP going rogue, going mad, fighting the plane. And in one case, uh, it also crashed as well. And that's the kind of things that we want to avoid, not just from the safety perspective, but also the fact that, you know, you don't want to willingly destroy your plane. Certain things that you can do on the ground and you must do on the ground that make sure you have a successful and good experience. Remember, before I go any further, Arcbird or any other autopilot manufacturer can do the best job in the world and bring out the best product. But finally and ultimately, it falls to you to make sure that the product knows inside the plane what straight and true is. If you don't do that, the best product in the world won't be able to save your plane. That is critical. So. Let's go right into it and for this purpose i'm going to turn the light on on the camera we'll make things look slightly blue but it's important for me to show you the first point and get a little bit close to it point number one mounting according to orientation instructions the ap the arcbird ap has clear mounting instructions and if you look at the top of it the top is the one with the blue writing and there is a handy arrow just over here beyond the carbon fiber point. This arrow should be in the direction of travel, which means towards the front of the plane. It's not the direction of thrust, remember, so it doesn't matter where if your motor is on the back of the plane or on the front of the plane, the arrow should face in the direction of travel. Simple, easy, I know, but I have to get it out there because it's important. Number two, mount axis. Now, this is important because that's something that needs a lot more calculation and finesse. Now, on the face of it, if you look at your AP, it might look very well straight, but a millimeter's worth of difference on pitch, roll, or your axis here can make a big difference at flight. What am I trying to say? What you're trying to do is to make sure, number one, it's sitting flesh with the chassis of the plane, as in there is no bulge either upwards from here or from here, as you can see, right? Or there's no tilt on the roll axis. And the most important, the one that really tricks you, is that there's no pitch on the yaw axis. That's the reason why I have the two form pieces shoved either side of it, so that if there is any vibration, it does not rotate its yaw axis. If your autopilot in here is positioned even a few millimeters from the theoretical center, and it's not facing in the direction of the plane, either in roll pitch and yaw, it will start fighting the plane. Or at at best, it will start drifting. And it has happened to me previously when I did not balance my motor properly because of the vibration. The Arcbird unit came loose. And when I would put it into cruise mode, it will start drifting towards the lift. Not violently, but rather very slowly. And I knew it wasn't a straight flight. That's when I put these two sponges either side of it. And now it does not move. Now, finding straight is rather difficult, but the first thing is you have to make sure that your chassis is straight. You know, there is no bulges on the foam underneath that will make the autopilot or the AP sit uneven. And number two, you can also do a little bit of calculation from this side to this side. Make sure you find the center of this alley in here and then make a line through it and measure your autopilot's width and find the center and then match that center to the line. I know it's a little bit of mats in there, but rather be safe than sorry. You just want to be the absolute center in there. That's the, the second mounting uh, advice or tip, if you want to call it. 
Now, how do you mount it? There are options in that regard. I personally recommend one of these little pads. I got it from banggood.com. This is like a squishy foam, not too very soft. Apparently they're like washing machine vibration dampeners. You can cut a little bit underneath and put it under the autopilot. That takes care of a lot of vibration coming into it. Arc but also suggest vibration to be kept low. You have a vibration meter on your unit. Keep an eye on that always. And if you feel that the vibration is abnormal, you wanna make sure that you damp it out. That's number one. Obviously you can stick it down with a double-sided tape. That's what I have used in here. I do not recommend any kind of glues, for example, hot glue or anything like that, because they set a little too hard, which means they will transmit a lot more of the vibration into the unit. So you want to create a slight bit, a slight of a damping barrier between the unit and the plane itself. Remember, there are also plastic units available dedicated with rubber grommet mounts that you can put your AP on. So if you want, you can buy one of those two from a dedicated website. Although in many cases like here, you will not have the space to put it. That's why I'm telling you about these measures here. Now, once you have put it down, now once you have stuck it, small things like sponges are very handy, like these two sponges here, and also these bad boys here. Now you see what I have done with this is, I have basically stuck these sponges and you can see the imprint of the carbon fiber is still there. I have stuck them underneath the carbon fiber and on top of the AP system. There we go. And believe me, as primitive and as simple as it looks, it's never failed me because Underneath the AP is a vibration dampening foam and double-sided tape. On the side is two sponges and on the top being pressed by the carbon fiber rod or other true sponges. So vibration is being dampened and also the unit is not going anywhere. That is what I'm trying to say in here. Tip number three, let's get on to that very quickly and that is a neutral point check. Let's assume that you have done all these things by now. You have put your autopilot, it's straight, it's good, it's true. That's fantastic. Well done, but the autopilot also has to know when the plane is straight and true. In other words, neutral. Now you say if the autopilot records this to be neutral, then that's a plane tilted to the left. If records this as neutral, that's a plane tilted to the right. So goes with the pitch and, the pitch and yaw as well. So what you need to do is you need to put your plane on a level ground and you make sure that you put something underneath the wing so it's looking absolutely straight. Now I'm going to go into a slight bit of a zoom mode to show you this. Oh, no, sorry, not zoom, widen. Here we are. You see, you want to make sure that the plane is sitting straight, not tilted left, not tilted right, sitting straight. Make sure you put equal distances underneath the wing, put something underneath the wing that are of equal distance. Look at it, look at it again and check it. Make sure that the plane is straight as it would be in the air. And while that happens, you go ahead and set a neutral point. You basically save the neutral point on the ArcBird AP. What that will do, it will tell the ArcBird what straight is. It's straight inside the chassis and it also knows when the chassis is at its straightest position. That basically should do it. That's about that. Regarding neutral point, let me give you a little tip in here. Uh, Arcbird recommends that if you put your plane away for say a month or two months or maybe even three, four weeks and fly after a long delayed pause, you should redo the neutral point. Good idea. And I highly recommend that being done. Although I'm going to be honest with you, I have actually flown this very plane after an absence of six months sitting on the closet and it had no problems. So. I'm just saying that it had no problems at that point, but I will go with what the manufacturer says, and that is redo the neutral point if you're flying after a long time. But if you're flying on a daily basis or at least two or three times a week, then you don't have to do the neutral point every single day. I hope this helps. These are three very basic things, and some of you, or most of you, might even know these things, but they have never done me wrong. And I have never had a problem where the ArcBird has gotten into a fight with the plane itself. I trust it so much that I actually would change my transmitter battery sitting down while I wait for it to bring the plane back. That's how much I trust it. But all that trust can only be established once you make sure 
that this unit sits straight and true inside the plane and it knows when the plane is straight and true itself. You have to do some of the legwork. Once you make sure of these parameters, then believe me, you will enjoy your AP system a lot more than before and you will have no troubles with it. Thank you very much. Any questions, any comments, put them down on the Facebook group or on my channel on YouTube and uh, fly safe and I'll see you guys in another video.